I worked for a large furniture manufacturer down in North Carolina who had plants in several states. It became clear to me that there was a glass ceiling and I could only go so high. Um, and I didn't know if that was because I was gay or because I was Jewish. I'm Mitchell Gold, chairman and co-founder of Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams Company. When I worked for this other furniture company, uh, one time the president of the company was coming to town to visit and had invited me to dinner along with several other executives and their spouses. And I told him, I said, Scott, I just uh, want to be clear that I am bringing Bob with me. And he cringed and said, oh, no, I don't think that would be a good idea. My wife really doesn't get that and doesn't approve of that. And I will admit that I was, I was just speechless and went to dinner without Bob. But it was the last time. I mean, you know, I thought that, you know, basically being a, a white guy, I'm going to be at the top of the pyramid as far as job opportunities and a lot of other things. Hi, I'm Bob Williams. I'm president of design of Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams. As a gay man growing up and all of a sudden realizing that you are a minority and that there are people out there that will discriminate against you because of who you are, and it, it kind of changes your whole perspective of, of, of what's out there. And I remember when I first started out in the workplace being very paranoid about talking about you know, the person that you're dating in a very neutral type of situation so that nobody would pick up whether or not it was a male or female, and always being on guard. What I find interesting is when you have a company that is not diverse, that is not open to people, um, that's just a small symptom of the way they treat everybody. When we were building our new factory, the one thing that I was really wanting and um, Mitchell and I both felt strongly about was having a factory that maybe on the outside wasn't a big fancy brick glass building, but, but a, a place where people when they drove by would say, you know, that's a place where I want to work because it's a great place to work. And that was really our bigger priority, was making sure that it was well lit, that had um, great benefits for people, and that it would be a, a, a place where they would want to come and, and work and actually do the best job that they possibly could, that they wouldn't be discriminated against because they were a male or a female, that they wouldn't be discriminated against because if they were gay or straight, but a place where they would be judged on how good of a job that they could do and various things like that. So um, I think that we need to even expand what we even talk about diversity. I mean, everybody's got something. We have people that smoke. We have people that eat too much. I had an employee who had a hearing problem and didn't want to wear his hearing aid. And I said, it's no big deal. Put your hearing aid on. Let people know that you can't hear. At least then they'll speak louder, speak more clearly. Each type of person has to feel comfortable in the company. I, I don't want the gay people in our company to feel special. I don't want them to feel separate. And it's important to Bob and I that straight people don't feel threatened because the company is run by two gay guys. I, I want it to be, everything should just be a smooth flow. And again, I think that's how we can set the best possible example. Um, you know, and in terms of recognition, I grew up in a family where we didn't start off uh, doing something because it was going to get us recognition. It really was about doing the right thing. I think I've become a lot more open-minded towards you know, rural North Carolina. I, it is an example for me. You know, I live in New York City. I grew up in New York City suburbs. And I think you know, we have a perception of what things might be like outside of New York. Hi, I'm Ed Custer, the Hospitality Account Director for Mitchell Gold Bob Williams. You know, when I get down to North Carolina and I'm visiting the factory and interacting with my colleagues there, you know, I think I've opened my mind to people who are in, to understanding, you know, people who are incredibly passionate about their religious beliefs or um, just different backgrounds, you know, and you know, working with Mitchell and Bob who are so involved with so many different types of organizations out there, whether it be for gay rights or for women's issues or being more environmentally conscious. We're very environmentally conscious as a company. We do things differently than a lot of other people do it. You know, anything out there, we're so involved with so many different issue, uh, social issues, um, really has opened my mind to be more active as well myself. Yeah, as a woman working for this company, I, I don't feel that my gender has any correlation to my performance, um, my evaluations, 
my relationships with other coworkers, and that's something that is is very different in other organizations. Something I didn't realize, but it's subtle but important. My name is Maria Thompson, and I am the store manager for the Soho store in Manhattan. Our customers really appreciate that we're a brand with depth. Those things play a big role in a customer's decision to, to go with Mitchell Golden Bob Williams, I think, in addition to great quality and delivery and all of those things. Our customers are diverse. So if we don't understand the diversity of our customers and understand their needs and how they live, it makes it very hard to be successful. Yeah, no, it was great. I mean, we sent that letter out to everybody telling them how we were going to get married. And Are you still going to do it, but maybe in Massachusetts or Connecticut? Yeah, we're still talking about it. You know, we, we were really looking forward to doing it in California, being Christopher's family is there, and Chris always really wanted the you know, beach type of wedding, so you know, we'll have to think about doing it in the Berkshires now. <laughs> or, or doing it in, in uh, Massachusetts on the coast. Or, <clears throat> exactly. In Provincetown, yeah. Growing up in the South, the one rule that was always pounded into me was, you know, treat others the way that you want to be treated. And I think that sometimes in the workplace, we forget that, especially as, as, as adults as we get older. And I think that's important. It really should be like the, the golden rule that every corporation, every company, every factory should do. I, think, I, I don't think that LGBT issues are the final frontier of diversity. I'm hoping that it will be the thing that really says to America that we have to stop discriminating against people. P part of the American dream is if you work really hard, you can be all that you can be. But unfortunately, I think uh, immigrants in, in America will be the next frontier that we have to cross. I don't think we're done. No, I don't think we'll ever. I don't think we ever will be done. I think diversity is one of those things that's going to change through you know through time. It's one of those things that um, there's always going to be something new and different in the workplace that people you know may not normally yeah. have been exposed to. So yeah, I think it's really important to continue to speak about diversity.